Hi, I'm here in San Jose for GTC, and I'm at the XR Pavilion. I'm joined by David. How are you doing, David? Hi, doing great. What's your role at N uh, NVIDIA? Thanks, yeah, so I'm uh, Dave Weinstein. I'm Senior Director of XR. Uh, I also have a, um, a generative AI workflows team who also works as part of my team. I had a look around the pavilion this morning. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, what really stuck out to me is we're starting to see industry pain points being meaningfully addressed by AI-enhanced XR workflows. Like XR yeah. has been around for a good decade in terms of uh, bringing value to media entertainment and industry, but it's really getting supercharged now by these AI workflows. So tell us a little bit about some of your favorites that we've seen here. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great point. So we've been talking about AI and XR and how they should come together for at least the, fa the last five years, right? As NVIDIA went all in on AI, as um, uh, one of the heads of XR, you know, I was trying to figure out what is, what is that intersection going to mean for us? And um, a lot of what we've been talking about was hypotheticals. You could use AI to do this. You could use XR to put them together in this way. Um, we finally have some great demonstrations of how, the, how they're now actually being used together. So for example, um, one of the demos that we're showing, which is called our Nimzon Workstation demo, we're able to uh, take a full resolution car model, in this case, the, the Rivian Dune that was just shown off at CES, um, bring it into VR um, so you can immersively visualize it in the headset, looks gorgeous, rendered on uh, multiple GPUs, and you can have a conversation with the application Show it to me in green. Let me see it from the passenger side. Open the door. You can also ask questions of the car, right? Because we feed it documentation um, from the specifications of the car, all publicly available data. And so now you can ask it questions. You know, if I'm driving from Los Angeles to Boston, how many days will it take me? How many times do I have to stop to charge? And it just has a natural conversation with you, all using a large language model um, uh, and supplemented with a, a, a RAG model being driven by that data. All of that can run on a single workstation, right? Because the workstation now has um, enough power, enough uh, frame buffer on the GPU to hold a large language model. You don't need to go up to the cloud to do the AI. You can do everything locally. Yeah. So just a great use case. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of hardware is completely at home within an enterprise environment. It's not That's a big right. ask at all. And the gains you're getting are quite phenomenal. The paradigm is now shifting to yeah. something that feels much more natural to this idea of spatial UI and UX. Because now you can free your hands of those controllers. You still have the gestures that you want, yeah. but now you're interacting with a space that was closer to your chain of thought. So as you walk through a space and you're thinking, oh, what about if I change this? You could ask the system, yeah. what would it look like? How would it feel? Yeah. And it kind of goes along with you. Yeah, so my, my bumper sticker for that is that AI will be the UX for XR, right? And it's a lot of acronyms, but it's really true because to your point, those clunky controllers, um, in a sense, they, they ruin the sense of immersion, they ruin the magic trick a little bit. What we all want when we're in these immersive environments is to have an incredible virtual assistant with us. Like, remember the best assistant you've ever worked with and you could just sort of say a few words and they knew what you meant and they would, they would help you on a project. You didn't have to go into a ton of detail. You didn't have to speak in very specific terms. You could just say, let's improve the lighting on this particular asset and it would know what you meant and do it or they would know what you meant and did it. We want to be able to do that in XR, right? And um, we're starting to see some examples here in the show where people are doing that throw away the controllers and just speak to the application. And where this becomes really important is, you know, I'm not trained in how to use all of these enterprise applications, right? I could spend a week learning how to go through all the menus, remember how to do teleport, remember how to do this. I don't want to remember that. And when, you know, our, uh, when your CEO comes in and says, you know, I want to go explore these different variants of the car, you want to be able to put them in the headset and have them just talk to the application, not need a specialist sitting next to them, um, not needing to do it on a specific schedule, 
uh, it means you don't have to be an expert in a particular application in order to use it and get all the power out of it. Yeah, and it's, re it's a really smart uh, combination because as agentic AI continues to mature, mm -hmm. that system will become more nuanced, yeah. more feel like more of a natural extension of your creative process or your collaborative process. Yeah. It'll be another entity in the room right. that as you're doing a group review, which is a standard part of the design process or visualization process, you have a couple of those agents that can make that collaboration all the more fluid, all the more productive, because you're making advanced choices in real time. Right, it realizes some of that vision. You know, when VR first came on the scene, um, we, we started talking about the benefits of it, that you could visualize spaces at full size. One of the things that we always talked about was collaboration, right? It enables collaboration at a distance. I don't have to be in the same room with you to collaborate around an asset. Uh, by being able to bring in a, a couple of AIs who can also be our assistant, it just takes it that much further, right? Makes it that much better, um, taking advantage of the fact that it is virtual. Yeah, and I've been using Omniverse since it was in its beta phases, specifically for media and entertainment purposes. Yeah. And what I love about the Omniverse ecosystem is that it is open USD sort of yeah. native which means that collaboration you talk about is part and parcel of the infrastructure. Yep. The managing of large data sets, whether it's a factory that you're visualizing in real time, or even a virtual production set that needs something at scale and high fidelity. Again, it's purpose made for handling those kinds of data sets. That's right. And Me. now with your, uh, with your Blackwell hardware, yeah. that real time lighting, real time ray tracing is laid on top, so it's a real, uh, merging of multiple technologies. It really is. It felt like you know it's been it's been kind of a stretch to things are just barely there previously, and now they're solidly there. Yeah. Right, the performance that we're able to get out of the Blackwell Enterprise GPUs is incredible. Right, every generation we're proud of what we do. This one was quite literally a step function. Right, the the 600 watt Enterprise Blackwell GPU. Um, is 80% faster than the previous highest end ADA GPU. I mean, it's incredible. You can put two of them together uh, and run it in what we call VRSLI mode. So all the power of two GPUs, nearly doubling your performance. It's crazy how much perf we're getting out of this. Yeah, it's mind blowing stuff. Uh, David, thank you so much for your time. Um, you know, the bleeding edge of this AI and XR convergence is right here for everyone to check out here at the XR Pavilion. It's a great new addition to uh, GTC. And for all of this stuff and more, uh, be sure to check out our socials and the Scan AI Solutions YouTube channel. Thank you, David. Great. Hey, thank you.